Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us at today's Day in the Life virtual event. We are excited to welcome you to the first of five days um, of our Day in the Life series. And we're doing this uh, multiple times this week to help us celebrate and highlight National Apprenticeship Week. So I'm Marie Stacks. I'm here today with the Arkansas Center for Data Sciences, most commonly known as ACDS. And ACDS, if you're not familiar with us, um, is a nonprofit organization that is dedicated to building and retaining the top data science, computer science, and IT talent in the state of Arkansas. So um, one of our main objectives is facilitating apprenticeship programs across the state with companies both large and small. And I am excited to be hosting today uh, to showcase what the average normal day in the life looks like for uh, folks in the data science industry. So um, to help me with that, I am joined here today with our guest speaker, Elizabeth Parker. She is the Senior Director, Principal Data Scientist at Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, and is based in Little Rock, Arkansas, has a phenomenal history and background in data science. So I'm excited for her to share quite a bit about her experience in and expertise of data science and analytics. So thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. Absolutely. So we will, I'm going to ask Elizabeth a few questions and you guys can kind of get to know her a bit. And then when we get further down, we uh, into the conversation, we'll open up for Q&A. So Keep your questions going, drop them in the chat. Uh, we will definitely incorporate them in. But uh, to get us started, Elizabeth, share us a little bit about kind of your background and who you are and what you do uh, as far as your team and your company. Sure. Um, well, my, I am an epidemiologist by profession um, and I have my PhD in statistics. And so um, I'm a numbers nerd. I've been in data science in varying different levels for, gosh, uh, uh, over a couple of decades now, I can't believe I can say that, but, um, you know, I've been with companies who have already had established data science departments, and so I've integrated myself into them, and then I've also started um, data science from a grassroots efforts, um, and then also adopted some growing and budding teams as well, so I've been at all kinds of uh, levels of data science and then in a few different arenas as well. So I've been mostly in the healthcare field um, like I am now, uh, but I've also been in the world of retail as well. So, yeah. So I guess kind of the big burning question is what does the typical day look like for a data scientist? Uh, especially, you know, you've got such, like you said, you've been in so many different industries. Um, what does it look like? So really it, Regardless of the industry that you're in, the data science role tends to kind of be the same. I spend about 60 to 80% of my time um, when I actually get to do the data science part of it instead of just meetings all the time. I spend about 60 to 80% of that time cleaning data and preparing data um, so that I can then explore it and create models or algorithms or whatever that is, um, to answer questions that people have. So really you're kind of taking all of this data. I know sometimes we kind of refer to it as like a data lake, right? So it's just tons and tons of information and you're making it usable more or less. Is that a fair way to put that? Um, usable for me. <laughs> and then, um, yes. And then really it is, creating insights for the end user. So whoever my customer is, and that's an internal stakeholder and sometimes external as well. Brilliant. So, yeah. That's awesome. So what um, kind of skills or attributes do you see someone in your role needing to have in order to be successful? Hmm. I would say right off the bat, curiosity. Um, being able to ask enough questions to really dig down deep and figure out what question really needs to be asked. I think, I think that's maybe one of the biggest challenges that um, data scientists have. They can answer all kinds of questions, but are we really getting to the root um, of solving the problem at hand? I'd, I'd also say being able to think outside the box is really important. Um, be creative about uh, solutions for people. Um, 
the same answer might be very different, um, a, a very different delivery depending on who you're answering that question for. Communication is huge. Um, if you can't communicate properly, then really, you know, what's the point, right? So if you can't tell the story in, in a fashion that is, is easy to understand or um, that really meets the need of what the, the people or person or client is asking, then you're really not doing much. You gotta be able to communicate it out. So um, let's see, of course, coding. And because I'm biased, um, I always say statistics is an absolute need um, for a data scientist just to help you build models and, and the most appropriate algorithms and choosing the most appropriate variables for all those equations. It, I think statistics is absolutely necessary. Yeah. Well, and I think sometimes we consider coding as being like language and, and I mean, really it's math. Coding is in, in an essence, a little bit of the math that we were taught as kids. It's putting these pieces together in formula form. So, yeah. Um, so that's awesome. So I, we almost got to five C's, but we have curiosity, creativity, oh. communication, coding, and statistics. So we'll figure out how to make <laughs> statistics a C at some point. Calculation. <laughs> there, calculation C. Okay. So we're going to use that later. Oh, um, that's genius. I love good <laughs> things that match up like that. Good call. I love it. I love it. So awesome. So, okay. So you mentioned that you've got this background in epidemiology, then you, you've been in healthcare, you've gone to retail, you're back in healthcare. How does that shift between industries? How does it change how you do your job? Does it just change who you're talking to and who you're telling the story about? It, it does. Yeah, of course. Um, the, the process of data science for me doesn't really change um, that much, to be honest. It really is just what problems are you solving for, for that day or that industry. Um, but that's also, the, I think, the good part about a data science field is that you, you can really be agile and you can really go from one topic to, to the next. And one aspect of, of I guess really the defining point of being a data scientist is, um, you know, the math part, the computer part, and then the business um, knowledge also. But the business knowledge comes with whatever industry you're in. So you, you kind of get to know that field. And so as long as you've got the math and then the computing side of things, you can, you can add yourself to any field. So that's, oh, that's what yeah. makes it fun, I think. I love that. I think too, it's, it's got to be really encouraging for folks that are looking to get into the industry of data science to say, you know what, I just have to learn these key components. And then the rest is, you know, you learn it on the road, you learn it as you go. So what has changed uh, in your role, you know, in recent years, has there been any kind of new technology or new, new tools that have been oh, put into play or. Oh my gosh. Well, we don't <laughs> have to use an abacus anymore. Thank goodness. Um, we're. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, um, there has been, you know, huge um, improvements in software. So all the by hand math doesn't have to be done anymore. We've got major tools now like SPSS and SAS that you can do um, very fast calculations. So that's a huge, huge win for us in the data science world. And then languages change all the time. Um, and I think maybe the biggest change since I've, you know, been working in data science has been uh, open source opportunities where you can learn from the community and, and you've got free access to a, a ton of different tools that can do anything you need. So if you don't speak one language, you can just get an open source translator and learn a new language, or you can figure out what other models people in the world are building um, to, so you don't have to start from square one. It's accessibility to um, knowledge and, and data has become so um, easy these days that uh, it really is game changing for data science. It also sounds like there's almost this additional accessibility 
to a community, you know, this like the, it, you know, this, the community for data science and data in general, and, and really IT has started to really blossom into being this very welcoming and open world to be a part of. Right. Yeah. Back in the day, um, <laughs> we would have to go to like conferences to be able to meet people that were in your field. But now all you have to do is just get onto any open source platform and chat with people who are having the same problems you are and you can brainstorm together. And um, so, so yeah, I mean, access to my community and access to other industry communities is, is now much, much simpler. You don't have to go to a conference anymore. I love it. I love it. So what are some of the ways that a data scientist adds value or impact in businesses? I know we've talked about kind of bringing, bringing things to where it's actually understandable and, and useful and can help tell the stories and make decisions on, but is there anything else that kind of the value add? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we're really good at processes, um, at least we should be very good at processes. And so making things much more efficient um, is a huge value add for any company, of course. And yes, automation of you know tasks is a plus. Um, in specifically in healthcare, though, automation, you still need a human interaction. You still have to have that human component. So it's not that we're working ourselves out of jobs. We're just making things much more efficient. Um, so, and of course, of course, it is beneficial to, in the healthcare world anyway, um, for patients and, and making patients' lives better and providing, you know, next best, next best actions for people and saying, you know, you, you have an appointment coming up or um, you haven't done this or you need to do this um, just to improve people's quality of life. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, my background's in healthcare as well. And so I've always felt that, you know, and I'm on the business side of it, right? So you're dealing with the data piece. I'm used to dealing with the business piece, but ultimately a big piece of all of that is the patient care. And so I know apprenticeships kind of play a role in all of that. You know, ACDS does the IT side of apprenticeships, and we've also got folks that are doing clinical sides of apprenticeships. So I think that's been something that's very interesting to us is, is bringing talent into these roles in a variety of ways through various pipelines. Um, do you find that it's difficult to attract strong talent to, to your role in businesses? Well, luckily I am working with ACDS, so <laughs> it's becoming less burdensome for us, but, but yeah, honestly, it is difficult to find, um, kind of the unicorns out there who have the ability to crunch the numbers, know the languages, and then more, more importantly, communicate those insights out. Um, there's, you know, U of A, UAMS, UALR, they're all starting, um, you know, masters in healthcare data, healthcare management, all of those things um, are being created right now in the university system, which is phenomenal. So I'm hoping to put my foot in that pond and start scooping up people um, as fast as I can. But, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, they're, they're becoming, there's, there's a much larger interest out there now than there has been in the past. So I'm hoping that challenge decreases over time, but we, we will see. Absolutely. And, and I think that's I, the talent market right now is a little crazy in general. So I no think joke. everybody's kind that of feeling that so heat. True. Yeah. So I guess kind of to, to wrap up our part of this, um, what advice do you have for people that want to pursue a career in data science? Well, I'll go back to having a solid foundation in statistics. <laughs> so start there, guys. If you don't like math, you might not want to be in data science. Or if you don't like math and you're still interested in data science, there's a niche there. You could do that. Um, really mastering the art of communication. And I know I've said that repeatedly, but um, really being able to not only tell the story, but Put, put pictures to it. And so utilizing tools like Power BI or Tableau, um, even 
you know, excel on steroids is a good thing to know. If you're trying to tell a story, people most often like pictures to go along with that. So having, having that ability is really important. And then be skeptic of all the data and be skeptic of um, the, the questions being asked. Um, just always ask why. And then of course, I would say, be kind to yourself and realize that you're not ever gonna know everything. And so get good at the things that you're interested in and stay passionate about those and, and the work will follow. Yeah. Such sage advice, I love it. I think, <laughs> I, 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 first of all, thank you. I, I'm so glad we've gotten to, to hear from you and to have you share kind of your insight um, and wisdom with us today. So I, am, I wanna open it to the floor to see if we have anybody that has a question um, and might be interested in asking something else. So, Great. And just a reminder that you are on mute. So you will wanna hit the unmute button first. <laughs> I was just so thorough that no questions. <laughs> I know. And I think Nikki's actually monitoring the chat for us. Bill? Elizabeth, I've heard you explain the difference between a data science problem solver and data analytic. Uh, it might be good for you to go into that for the, for the group because we, we kind of use them interchangeably and that's incorrect. Um, Thank you. You are right. That is incorrect. I would say a, an analyst, a data analyst, is um, essential to be to be a data scientist. But data science um, really is kind of the advanced analytics. So where we're able to not just tell what's happened in the past, which is where an analyst um, typically stands but we're able to tell the pick the whole story so what's happened what's happening right now in the present and then more importantly to be able to predict what could happen in the future with with good certainty so that's the data science part is the predictability and forecasting portion of it that's consistent with what i remember you explaining to us <laughs> thank, thank <you>. goodness <laughs> I love it. It looks like Meredith uh, has a question as well for us. Meredith? Yeah, thanks so much for, for speaking today. Um, one of my questions, so I'm transitioning careers and I already have um, done a lot of college coursework and I'm trying to avoid more degrees basically. And yet it seems like in healthcare, uh, especially that a degree relevant to the field is more more necessary or more required by employers than um, than doing data engineering, data science in, in other industries. And so I'm just curious if you could speak a little bit to whether I'm accurate or not, um, if there are ways that you recommend training up without spending the time to go get a degree in computer science or uh, data science. I would. I think you get the idea of it. Thank yeah, you. yeah. Um, I completely understand not wanting to tack on more degrees or going to school. I totally get that. Um, as far as specification goes for the healthcare industry, um, I can't really speak to that, um, but I can speak for data science. And it is extremely important for me and the teams that I build to not be um, specific to the field that we're in. I think it, it, um, it brings to the table creativity. Um, it really helps people think outside the box. So for instance, I just hired a data scientist who is a, a CPA and, and, and we're in the healthcare field. So um, it, I, I think variety and the ability to uh, look outside the healthcare industry from a data science perspective is more is beneficial. Um, as far as upskilling goes, um, uh, places just like ACDS is a great place to start for sure. Um, but then also there are boot camps if, for data science. Um, I know North Carolina has a really really good one. Um, and then there's you know a couple six week options 
Uh, you can do kind of on your own time for North Carolina is one. Um, I probably should have written some of these down before I got on the call today. But um, if you just look up data science boot camps um, or data analyst boot camps, those uh, are pretty easy to find. And some of them are even free. That's great. And we're, we are going to send out this recording. So Elizabeth, if, if you want, we can touch base and we can include some of those Meredith in oh. our, our email after we're going to send it out as an email as well. So I already have those in an email. So I'll just, there you go. That to you. okay. So we'll get those sent out for you guys. Um, so that'll be great. What well, any fantastic question, first of all, from both you, Bill and Meredith, um, any other questions for Elizabeth while we still have her? Well, I'd also be interested in hearing why you chose to transition to retail and why you chose to transition back to healthcare. Ow. <laughs> um, I thought to myself, I, I was in healthcare for, I don't know, 15 years or so. And I thought it would be interesting and it would be most beneficial for me to get um, some experience in the private industry. And the opportunity um, presented itself. And I thought, well, math is math, right? So might as well just give it a whirl. Um, and so, so that's what I did. And I went into the retail world, learned a whole bunch um, and, and really missed the healthcare world, knowing that um, we could really be impacting people's lives from, uh, from a healthcare perspective. And so it was just, it, I, this is where my niche is. This is where my uh, passion truly is. And so I made my way back over. Yeah, and I have one more question. Um, as companies start to go to more of an automated process um, in organizations, how will your role, role, excuse me, continue to change? That's a good question. Um, so part of my role is to help automate processes. Um, It, it isn't about, so artificial intelligence is truly just the creation of an automation. That's what that is. Machine learning um, is the compilation of many AIs put together. It's kind of how I like to think about it. With all of those things in place, machines cannot interpret outputs as appropriately as a human. So it's, it's always needed to have human interpretation of, of, of the automated processes. So, so my job and my role as automated as we're becoming um, is to help people interpret what those outputs mean. And so that's, that's kind of a, that's a complicated question, but um, I think the evolution of my role is going to be um, explaining processes in a, in a way that makes sense to people, I guess. Yeah, I think you answered the question very well. Oh, thanks. <laughs> awesome. All right. So um, any other questions before we've got a couple more minutes that we, we can use? All right. Well, I uh, thank you again, Elizabeth. It has been so much fun having you on today. Um, if you can unmute, I'd love for us to all give Elizabeth just a short round of applause, which is very rare in the virtual world, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks thank for having me. Absolutely. It was nice to talk with all of you and I will send you that email with those boot camps in there as well. Wonderful. Well, we'll get that out to everyone. Um, if you have a chance to join us for some more of our events this week, we would be ecstatic to have you. We have four more day in the lives. Um, we have quite a few, I think 20 plus events for National Apprenticeship Week. So oh. um, definitely check out our website, www.acds.co. And we will include that in our email out and then uh, check out all the resources we have there if you are wanting to get into starting your career in IT. So Thank okay. you, Elizabeth and Marie. Yeah, thanks, thanks so much, guys. It was nice to see everyone's face. Agreed. Awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Have a wonderful day. You too.